car, at our cubicle, at our workspace, in the shower, wherever you are, it invites the presence of God there. And I can't live without God's presence. I can't live without it and neither can you. Because the word declares that we cannot live by bread alone. We're going to try to finish up uh, the revelation portion of glorious rest tonight. Glorious rest is uh, when we allow God, when we allow, first of all, we surrender. There's that word again. We surrender our own activity. Okay. We stop trying to get to the promised land on our own merit. Stop trying to get to the promised land by our own ideas. Okay. We cease from self-promotion. We cease from trying to make the miracle happen. Sometimes we want a miracle so bad that we do what we can to help God to make it happen. Just yesterday, I've been uh, praying about some things, um, believing God for some things that haven't happened yet. And if we're not careful, we'll put our eyes on that on the thing not moving and not trusting God who we cannot see, who is always moving. Do you understand? It'll steal your joy if you look at the thing that's not moving. Stop focusing on the unanswered prayer and focus on the one who answers prayer. Because if you stare at your unanswered prayer, it's a vacuum that just begins to suck all the life and joy out of you. The only way to have any kind of joy when you're, when you're uh, focusing on your unanswered prayer is to dance around it. And to begin to thank God, God is not here yet, but I trust you. I believe that you're going to answer my prayer, and I'm going to fully trust you, and I'm going to praise you in advance. Amen? So, glorious rest is when we cease from our own activity, we cease from our own motion, our own ideas, and we learn to enter into God's rest. And the way that he gave me what rest stands for, the R stands for revelation. We need to hear from God. Okay? The Word of God says that if any of us lack knowledge... Let us ask God. So if you don't know what to do, first of all, stop stressing and start praying and ask God. God, I need revelation. Then he's going to empower us. That's what the E stands for in rest. He's going to give us power. He's going to give us of himself to get the job done. Did you hear that? He's not depending on your strength or your strategy or your might or your power. But the word of God says by his spirit alone. So we're trusting that God's going to step into our situation, going to motivate us with strength, going to give us energy, going to give us vision. And through the spirit of God, we accomplish the thing that was seemed impossible without him. Matthew 19, 26 says, for with men, it is impossible. Your ideas, your resources, your timing, your vision, all these things, the mountain that you face is impossible to move with you alone. With men, it is impossible, but with God. Can you say with God? With God, all things are possible. With God. But you've got to surrender your motion. Many of us are so stressed out and so worried about things because our motion is leading us nowhere, and he wants us to enter into his rest, and the only way that we can do that is by faith. Can you say faith? Faith is the most important thing you own, regardless of whether you use it or not. Faith is the only way to achieve rest because sometimes God will put you to sleep. That's what happened to me yesterday. I came down here, dropped my daughter off at dance. I was supposed to pick her up at 6. Thought I'd get some things done at the church that need to be done. My mind was racing. I was in motion. Okay, everyone point at me. Point at me. Damien was in motion. And there's no victory that comes from my motion. So rest stands for revelation, empowerment, strategy that comes from God and then triumph. So here's our default setting. We're faced with a problem. We go straight to strategy. We try to start figuring out. Okay. But that's not rest at all. Okay. Say this. I need need a a word from the Lord. See, revelation What God has said sets your victory into motion. You need a word. Man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So there I am back at the desk, uh, just working tirelessly, had to slow it down, all right, trying to search out some things, trying to get some things done. 
And I don't know when it happened, but I fell asleep. I didn't lay my head down. I didn't try to go to sleep. I didn't lean back. But at, at some moment in time, I just fell asleep. I believe God just calls rest to come upon me. I just fell asleep. And I want, to tell you, I want to tell you guys something. Don't feel bad when you're praying and fall asleep. Because it's a gift sometimes. Sometimes when you fall asleep in prayer, it's a gift. That God gives you a rest that you can just go to sleep and he can begin working on you while you are asleep. So he blessed me to just fall asleep. And then at 6 o'clock on the dot, I woke up. And that's the time I was supposed to pick her up. But it worked out that I wasn't late when I got there. All right. So God always causes us to triumph. But sometimes he has to cause us to fall asleep. He's waiting for us. Are you out of ideas yet? Do you surrender yet? You're still trying. And sometimes he's just got to put us to sleep. So revelation is so important because we need a word from God. Something I did last night to slow my activity down, my mind down, was went to YouTube and typed in a certain type of scriptures, scriptures about peace or scriptures about victory. And over an hour long with music, the word of God is being read. And it's feeding, it feeds your inner man. You need the Bible so bad, if you're born again, you can't live without it. See, your body can live without the word of God, but your spirit cannot. Do you understand that? The Bible is so vital for your faith because it gives you something to stand on. Lord, I need something to believe in. Give me a word. Amen? So that's what we've been talking about is revelation. How to hear the voice of God. And he speaks in many different ways. So we know that revelation is this. It's God's supernatural communication with the spirit of a man. It is a revealing of God's divine truths and or plans. Or to sum it up, it's God letting you know what's going on. What he's about to do. How he's going to bring you victory. And sometimes he'll give you the whole picture, and sometimes all he creates for you is just a step. Why is that? Because the word of God says that we can't live by these things. You will worry yourself to death trying to figure things out and try to find the next plan, trying to find the next strategy. The word of God says that we do not walk by sight, but we walk by faith. Faith means you don't see the step out there. You don't understand the step. But since God has spoke, you obey. That's what makes us good sheep when we follow what the shepherd says. So how do we receive revelation? We receive revelation by the spirit of God. So God can speak to us in uh, prophecy. He can speak to us through visions or he can speak to us through dreams. How many of you have ever had a dream where you felt like God spoke to you in your dreams? Raise your hands high. All right. And some of you, he has, and you just thought it was the chili you ate. Okay. You're like, where did that dream come from? You know, I better stop eating that late. But God speaks to us in our dreams. Okay. We have to understand that. We also must understand that God speaks to us through his servants. Okay. I'm I'm one of his servants. And he has given me a message to speak to you in this format as me acting as a pastor. But it doesn't have to be a pastor that gives you a word from God. It just has to be a servant of God. So so at at any point in time, God can use somebody to get a word to you. How many of you have experienced that? Outside of church, that someone talked to you and it was God speaking through them. So that's revelation. We need it so desperately. The only way we get victory is through God's words. What is he saying? So he uses his servants also to make sure that we are able to get a word for him. So he desires to reveal what he's going to do. He told Abraham, he said, shall I hide that which I am about to do in his life? God wants to give our faith something to aim at. Do you hear me? Your faith needs a target. In order for you to have any hope in your life at all, your faith needs something to shoot at. I need a target. God, give me something to believe in. And how do we get that? Through his word. So whether it's a dream, a vision, 
prophecy, a man or woman of God speaking to you, you need your faith needs something to aim at. Your faith. Um, I'm a police officer, obviously. Uh, not the, I'm not dressed as a police officer, so it's not obvious, maybe. But I have never shot my gun at a person. Okay, I still have it. Okay, but I've never used it to do that, and I pray that I never have to. But faith is not like that. Faith is not something that you can just carry around and never shoot and never use. See, because the word of God says that without faith, it's impossible to please God. So he is desiring that you pull out your faith and use it and please him. So what do we aim our faith at? We aim our faith at the word of God. What did God say? Because God can't lie. So what did God say? So that's what I'm going to point my faith at. Why is revelation so important? Because the word of God says that we go from glory to glory to glory. And in order to do that, we must go from revelation to revelation to revelation. You see, every time we encounter a trial, every time we go through something, there's a revelation for that trial. And once we go through the process of revelation, empowerment, strategy, triumph, we go to a new glory. So in order to go from glory to glory to glory, we go from trial to testing, trial, tribulation, all for the sake of God. Amen? So we will not always be able to figure it out. We are going to have to faith it out. I know that's not good English, and my English teacher would be like, no, Damien, that's not how you say it. But it makes sense to me. I can't. There's some things I just can't figure out. I've got to faith them out. I've got to close my eyes to the situation because looking at it is causing me anxiety. Thinking on the problem is is ministering anxiety to me because I want to go touch it and I can't fix it. So in order to faith it out, I've got to turn my back on that thing that I want to fix and touch and say, God, I am trusting you that you are going to see me through. And that's where verses, that's where the Bible comes into play, that we're able to use uh, what he has said for our advantage and give our faith something to stand on. So what do we do then while we wait on God to provide rest? Let's be honest. Raise your hand if you've got some type of problem or situation in your life right now, like today. Some type of situation, some type of problem. Okay. Raise your hand if you've prayed about it. Have you prayed about it? That's that's step one, right? Okay. So what about the meantime? That's what gets us into so much trouble is the meantime. That's when the flesh wants to say, oh, I got to do something about this. God's not moving yet. And all this anxiety comes All this stress comes while we wait. And there's only two ways to wait. We can wait patiently or we can wait impatiently. And impatient waiting is caused by fear. Let's call it what it is. When you're stressed out between the time you pray and God answers the prayer, we allow fear to enter the situation and fear is an imposter. Fear does not belong in our lives. The word of God says, I have not given you the spirit of fear, but I've given you power and love and a sound mind. You see, this is the beauty of it, saints of God, that there is already revelation all throughout the Bible. There's always something to stand on while you wait for the Lord. There's always a scripture to stand on. You don't ever have to be without rock or solid ground when you wait for God to answer a prayer. And I wish I had one of those uh, accordion type uh, picture holders. You know how some men used to carry them in their wallet. And let me see your family. Okay. So that's something that we must keep in mind, too, while we wait on God. Okay. We've got an accordion thing full of old testimonies. While we wait on God, stop looking at the problem and look at his many benefits towards you in the past and say, here, every time I worried for a little bit, he answered, he answered, he answered. As I go through the thing that I'm going through right now, God was able to ask me a question that I had to tell the truth about. 
Damien, have I ever failed you? Ever. Have I ever failed you? You see, the flesh is a dangerous thing because it makes you forget God. It gets you self-motivated and self-active and makes you forget all about God. So that's why I'm glad that he, the, for the, I thank God for the Holy Spirit. Can we give the Holy Spirit applause tonight? I'm so very thankful for the Holy Spirit that's able to tap us on our shoulder when we're so active trying to figure things out, so active trying to work things out in the flesh, and we get so worried. Uh, I was laying by my son Dominic last night as I was listening to praise and worship, and, I, and God, God asked me a question, and he got me thinking about my son, thinking, you know, is there anything that you wouldn't do for this boy or protect him from? Is there anything? Nothing. And the Bible says that if men, being evil, know how to be a good father, how much more our father? Now, if I saw Dominic playing in the street, I'd be a very bad father to let him stay out there and get hit by a car. So maybe our anxiety is lying to us. Do you hear what I'm saying? Fear is a liar. Fear is a liar. It always, it always makes us think that God is not, that God is dead or something. That God uh, cannot hear or his arms are too short to respond. See, the problem is that we put God on our timeline and he's not moved by our impatience. He's only moved by faith. God is not moved by our impatience nor our anxiety. The only way to please God is by what? Faith. And the only way faith comes is by hearing the word of God. So whenever you're anxious, I am prescribing to you something that you don't need a copay for. And it comes with zero side effects. And it's called the word of God. Try it. I mean, technology, we use it for so many things, but use it for God's glory. Go to YouTube and type in scriptures about healing or scriptures about peace. And let them just play and get into the atmosphere and get into your hearing. Something happens. See, your, during, during stages of anxiety and fear, your spirit man is just, has just shrunken up. Do you understand that? Your spirit man needs to eat the word of God for your faith to be strong inside. But if you've stayed away from the word of God and you've been busy trying to fix the problem yourself, operating in fear, your spirit man has not had a chance to eat. In order for anything in this world that God has created to have energy, it must eat. Your faith is no different. Your spirit man is no different. You've got to feed it the word of God for it to be strong. So that's exactly what I did last night. I, I'm your pastor, but I'm not exempt from anxiety if I don't follow the, the, stra the pattern. I'm not exempt from uh, being nervous or, being, uh, or having depression if I don't follow the word of God. If I fail to follow the word of God, I'm just as weak as anyone else in the world. Do you understand that? So I prescribe to you that it's so important that you pour the word of God in. Because listen, everything that we do outside of faith is sin. This is a big one. This is a big one. So we think it's we think it's murder and uh, blaspheming God and all these things that we stopped doing when we got saved. But did you know that operating in fear can be sinful because everything that is not of faith, the word of God says, is sin. So when that's why the word of God says that we have to stay out of the flesh, because all the flesh and when you hear the word flesh said in here. It's not talking about, you know, the, the, what, why are they always talking about their skin? No, it's our old will. It's the will that God saved us from. When we got born again, we we're supposed to turn in our old will and let it experience the death that Jesus Christ experienced. And then we are raised up with a new will, and that new will is to please the Father. Okay? So whenever you hear the word flesh, that means the old self and the old will. All right. Let's continue. We've got to make sure that every action, every action that we uh, prescribe to do brings glory to God. 
The word of God says that whether you eat or drink, let it all be done to the glory of God. So we shouldn't be uh, concerning ourselves with any activity that is not of faith. Okay, let's continue. So what do we do while we wait on God to provide rest? Every challenge, mountain, giant, or test requires a revelation that leads to triumph and victory. So when you present and cast your care to God, what do you do in the meantime? Once we present, the Bible says, cast your cares on God, but it doesn't say he'll immediately give you a response or that he'll immediately take the situation away or he'll immediately fix it, okay? This is where faith comes in. And, and listen, listen, listen. If faith is so important to God, which it is, then he's going to make sure that our faith is constantly undergoing a workout. Do you understand what I'm saying? The trying of your faith. That's what these problems are for. The trying of your faith. Will you remain faithful or are you going to run back to the problem and try to fix it again on your own? So we must stay out of our own strategy, get on our knees and in our Bibles and do what he has already said. Okay, so here are other ways that God speaks to us. Okay, so revelation also is spoken to our hearts. Can you say hearts? When I say heart, I mean your inner man. I mean your inner set of ears, your spiritual ears, the heart of a man, that, that new creation that God has given you. God can speak directly to your heart. Let's look at Luke chapter 24, verse 32. This is the road to Emmaus. Revelation spoken to our hearts. So as they were walking the road to Emmaus with Jesus and he departed, one of them looked at the other and said this in verse 32. They said to each other, didn't our hearts burn within us as he talked with us on the road and explain the scriptures to us? That's the beauty of having the Holy Spirit on board to give you scripture, to give you revelation when you need it the most. I am going through a situation where I'm trusting God to answer, but I'm learning that it's only going to be in his time, okay? And when I worry or when I look at that situation too long and my inner man starts to shrink up, I thank God for the Holy Spirit on board that's able to minister revelation to me, that's able to remind me of a scripture. And one of my favorite scriptures that gets me through the waiting period is this, be not weary in well-doing, for in due season you will reap if you faint not. So don't stop doing what's right, okay? And don't faint, because if you faint, you don't get the promise. Another scripture that I love when I'm waiting on God to answer a prayer is that he will not withhold any good thing from the upright. So that just means... It's not ready yet. And I've used this example before. If my wife is cooking brownies after dinner and they've only been in the oven for one minute and my son is Drayden, who loves sweets, is like, Mom, you said I could have a brownie. Where's my brownie? Why aren't you giving it to me? Well, the reason I'm not giving it to you, son, is it's not ready. It's not done cooking. God promises every single one of us that walk uprightly, that follow his commandments, that obey him, that love him, that trust him, that treasure him, that he will not withhold any good thing. Nothing. So the blessing that you're praying for is either not good for you right now or it's not ready yet. Now, I felt this. I don't know if it was for me or from you, but the flesh still cries out, it's my money and I want it now. <laughs> right? Isn't, that, isn't that, that that part of you on the inside that says, I know God said that, but uh, I want, I've been waiting for so long, I want it now. 
And you know what else he's trying to do? Uh, if you missed our 6 o'clock class, you missed a wonderful, wonderful class uh, where Apostle Jefferson talked about surrendering and waiting and being in a pit and what God uh, is trying to kill within us, parts of us that need to go when we're down in the pit while we're waiting. So through your weight, our weight says a lot about us. You want an example? Uh, how are you on a Sunday after church when the food's taking too long to get to your table. Our weight reveals a lot about us. The light has turned green, and the car in front of you has not moved yet. What is your response? Our weight tells a lot about us. Do you understand that? So, what if during this wait, and I know it's true because this is revelation coming to my own heart right now, what if it's true that the reason the wait is so long is not that God is waiting for that item to get into his storehouse or not that God is waiting for someone else to provide it, that, that God can't do it. What if the wait is meant to change you? What if the wait is meant to strengthen your faith and your trust? And what if whining and complaining and getting in the flesh only prolongs the process? I better start moving on. All right. So the Holy Spirit, revelation can come when God speaks to our hearts, okay? Um, how many have had this happen before? You were short with someone or you, you were rude to someone and then the Holy Spirit, you know, speaks to you and says, uh, you need to go over there and you need to apologize and you need to do it right now. Anyone want to be honest? OK, so no preacher came up to you and said that was wrong. No angel showed up to you and said that was wrong. No, your Bible just didn't. The wind didn't blow your Bible open. It was on a verse that says that was wrong. The Holy Spirit can speak to us. Revelation can come directly to your heart. So God can reveal his word and his way to you directly deposited into you without the, without the service of people, without the service of angelic beings, without a vision, without a dream, that while you're totally awake, God can speak to your heart. And let me tell you something. If you ignore it, you lose. When you ignore revelation... When you ignore the word of God, we lose every time, and, you go, and you, you're just stuck in your tracks until you repent. So are there any things, anything, is there anything that we need to repent about to God? Is that why we're stuck in a rut right now? Have we not did part A, and we're trying to skip to part B of the blessing? Amen? All right, so he speaks to our hearts. So how else does God speak to us? He speaks to, he speaks to us, or he brings revelation through angels. Let's go to Matthew chapter 1. Has anyone ever had an experience with an angel? Anyone ever seen one? I see a few hands. Uh, I did. I was living uh, on Allentown Road uh, before I was married, um, and I woke up one morning, and at the foot of my bed was this huge angel, and I saw him for just a moment. And it wasn't one of those in white uh, like, I don't want to fight or get dirty kind of angels. It was like a warrior angel. I just saw him for one moment. And here's the way that I, the best way I can describe it. I felt like I wasn't supposed to see him. I felt like that he didn't realize I was going to wake up so fast. And then when I saw him, he was like, oh, I better get out of here. But I know that's not the case, but that's just the best way I can humanly describe why God let me see it. It seemed like I caught him off guard, like, oh, shoot. You know, that he, he went away and said, oh, man, I let my guy see me. You know, but it wasn't like that at all. God let me see him. He was as tall as the ceiling was and looked very powerful, very big. Uh, nothing like you see on TV at all, but just a warrior. That, that's the best word I can describe it uh, for. So God also uses angels on this earth to implement his plan on this earth and to bring us revelation or to speak a word to us. It's not as common as the other ways that God speaks to us, but it's still very possible, okay? Let's go to Matthew chapter 1, 
beginning in verse 19, to see how God uses angels to bring revelation or to bring people into triumph, victory. That's what we're talking about. Glorious rest is a rest that God gives us where he gets all the glory and we do very little activity except trust him. Our only activity when it comes to God getting the glory through, through rest is to just remain in faith. I'm just going to stand here and trust you. And how do we know that scripturally? There was many times where God says this, look, you need not to fight in this battle at all. I am the one that's going to deliver you. All you need to do is just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And what happens when we're disobedient? Remember the story of Lot's wife. God sent destruction on Sodom and Gomorrah. And the revelation was given, okay, do not look back at the destruction. And what did she do? That flesh, that fleshly side of her, that nosy part of her killed her. All right? If you disobey God when the revelation has come, it's sin. Whew, that hurt. Pastor Damien, did you hear what you just said? When God gives you revelation on what to do and how to do it, and you do it another way, it's sin. Because you're operating in fear. And anytime we operate in anything that's not faith, it's sin. Okay? Let's keep going. Matthew chapter 1, 19 through 23, God re brings revelation through angels. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her publicly. Talking about Mary. So he decided to break the engagement quietly. All right? So this, all right, if he would have done this, this would have messed up everything. This was God's biggest plan on earth, sending Jesus Christ. He can't have Joseph messing it up. Joseph needs some immediate revelation. Joseph needs to hear. Joseph, uh, there was no time for a prophet to come. There was no, you know, he wasn't going to find it in the Bible because the Bible wasn't fully written back then. He didn't know what he was doing. Okay, so God had to intervene immediately to make sure that his glory was not disturbed and his plan was not disturbed. So he sent an angel to Joseph, okay? Verse 20, as he considered this, say this, as I consider we need God to disrupt our strategy as we're even considering it. Even when we start thinking about a plan B, when only plan A is going to give God glory, we need to say, God, you have permission to come and interfere with any plan that this brain hatches up that's against you getting glory and against your plan. So the Bible says, as Joseph considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. So you see God intervening as you consider. So we've got something greater than angels on board right now, and that's the Holy Spirit. So I believe that sometimes that as we consider to do something sinful, as we consider to take a left when God's saying take a right, the Holy Spirit will speak up and say, ah, no, mm -mm, don't do that. Because the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. He's the spirit of truth, okay? So, as he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. This is revelation. Revelation is God's plan being revealed, okay? For the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now, remember I told you that sometimes during Revelation that God doesn't give you the whole picture, but sometimes we're about to do something so stupid that God has to tell us the whole plan. Like, he can't reveal it piece by piece by piece. He wouldn't have been able to say, the angel didn't stop it, just say, Joseph, son of David, and then it's over. You know, sometimes God speaks slow to us. Sometimes he'll just call your name, get your attention, and you're like, okay, God, what is it? You know, what? He just wants you to keep focusing, keep listening. But sometimes the situation is so dire that he's got to tell you the whole plan so you don't mess it up. All right, moving on. Revelation also comes by the written word of God. If you've got your Bible, lift it up, even if it's electronic. All right? Here is another way that God speaks to us. I thank God for recorded revelation. I thank God that 
he caused the scribes and he caused those that, that took record and took account to write down his wonderful works so that we had a reminder to how faithful God has been for th- all time. Adam and Eve messed up, but yet he was faithful to them. So his track re- record is perfection when it comes to being faithful, when it comes to showing up when we need him. Here they are, naked and ashamed, afraid because they sinned against God. And what's God do? Gives them some clothes. Just love, just love all throughout the Bible, always providing a way. Okay, so did you hear what I said? Say this with me. God always provides a way. He always provides a way because he's a good father. He's an awesome God. He's always going to provide a way. He's not going to let us drown. Did you hear what I said? Uh, How many of you, uh, I, I still don't know how to swim very well, so never push me in, okay, But how many of you learned to swim because dad or uncle or somebody just threw you in the water? Anybody? I see one, two, some back there. Okay. All right. Learn how to swim just by getting thrown into the water. And sometimes we feel like, God, you're going to let me drown. This situation is going to kill me. Why are you letting me go through this so long? What are you doing, God? And he's just teaching you, you can do it. You can swim. I'm with you. I'm never going to leave you. I'm never going to forsake you. I'm not going to let this situation cause cause you to die. I'm going to protect you. But you have got to begin to use your own faith to walk towards me. Remember Peter getting out of the boat? Jesus didn't walk for him. Peter's faith spoke up and said, Lord, if that's you, bid me to come. Come. He walked towards him. What did he do? Got in the flesh for a moment, saw the wave, saw the, looked at the trouble again, and started to sink. That's the pattern. That's where anxiety comes from. Okay, you can be trusting God, and you can be believing fully for a healing, for a job, for a miracle, and then all of a sudden, you just look out of the corner of your eye and see the problem not solved. And you're like, oh. It just steals your joy. Can you feel it? It just steals your joy immediately when you focus on that problem and your faith and your strength just begin to sink. And then you have to say, Lord, save me. But the only way to say, Lord, save me is to look at him and focus on him again. And he is where alone where our help comes from. Our help does not come from trying to figure it out. Our help comes from saying, Father, help me. Amen. So. Revelation comes through the written word of God. 2 Timothy 3 and 16 says this. All scripture, how much? All All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So Revelation comes from us reading the word of God. The word of God is so important. The word of God is what fuels our faith and fuels our spirit. If you stay out of the word of God, you instantly become weaker and weaker and more worldly and more worldly minded and more worldly minded. Okay, we are not we do not have uh, the ability to uh, gain strength or gain faith in any other way but through the word of God and through the revelation of God. That's why I I, I beg of you. It's my strong desire that you spend time in the word of God daily. Daily. When you can't stop and read it, we've got no excuse. We've got technology that will read it for us. Okay? The word of God is what gives our spirit man strength and allows us to stand when the storm comes and the storm is coming. The storm always comes, and the wind is going to blow, okay? And what determines if you fall over or not is how much weight of the word you've put into you, okay? If you've put a lot of word into you, when the storms of life blow against you, you can stand firm, all right? You'll be like the, the, the trees, the palm trees during the hurricane. Just a lot of flexibility, okay? Does that look pretty cool? <laughs> a lot of flexibility. Okay, the wind's blowing, but you're, but you're rooted. 
You're rooted in the word of God. Nope. I've been reading the Bible. I trust God's scriptures. I need them to live. And, and this is so important. The Bible says that men do not live by Arby's and Cupy and McDonald's alone, but by the word of God. So anytime you're feeling weak, fearful, anxious, please run to the word of God. Run to the word of God. Amen. Why is that? Well, let's see. Hebrews 4 and 12 says this. For the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. And here's, here's my, one of my favorite parts about it. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. So as I read the word of God, it shows me my stinking thinking. It shows me how I have been uh, in error about a way I felt or about something I've done. All right. It's it's the best. The Bible is the best mirror there is. It lets you see the truth about yourself and come to the standard of God. The Bible is so important because it's the truth. The Bible is so important because it is Jesus himself. Do we not understand that the word became flesh and dwelt among us? The Bible is spending time with Jesus. Like, wouldn't it be awesome just if you could just press a button every once in a while, leave all your problems and just go be with Jesus for a couple minutes? Wouldn't that be great? That's what this is. That's what the word of God is. It's you putting a pause button on life, on anxiety, on worries, on trouble, on struggle, and spending time with Jesus and letting him minister directly to your spirit. Galatians 6 and 9, I said that, one of my favorite verses tonight. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we will reap if we faint not. So when I'm worried or troubled, that's one of the scriptures I go to. And it's powerful and it's alive. It's powerful and it's alive, meaning it works every time. Every time that I use that Bible scripture, every time that I use that verse when I'm worried, it works. Do you know why? Because the Bible says that the word of God is powerful and it's alive. So that means that it works. So it ministers truth to the lie that's going on inside of me. It ministers truth to my activity and causes me to cease from trying to work things out myself and just wait on God. You see, we've been taught that if you want something, you got to work hard for it. You got to go get it. You got to lose sleep. You got to make sacrifices. But the word of God says those that just wait upon the Lord, he will renew their strength. So what God is trying to teach us is that he wants to be our number one go to. He wants to be our number one resource, not only in time of trouble, but at all times. The word of God says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things will be added unto you. All right. Finally, our last way that revelation comes, all right, is the reason that I am sweating right now. Revelation also comes by the spoken or the preached word of God. Revelation can come to you by the spoken or the preached word of God. That's why many of you keep coming back, because you hear the word of God here. It's truth to you. It it becomes uh, fruit to you, energy to you, and it's powerful to you, and you know that your life is different because of it. How How many of your lives have been changed by the word of God? Obviously, we wouldn't keep coming back here, Right? We want to surrender ourselves to the hearing of the word of God so that faith can grow. Luke 4 and 4 says this, and Jesus answered him saying, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God or by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So we understand that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, right? But Jesus came so that we might have what? Life and life more abundantly. Well, how do we get that life? We get that life from the word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Romans 10, 14. We're talking about 
ways that we receive rest and revelation. How many of you have ever come to a, a, a church, not just this one, but you've went to a church, you've heard the word of God, and it spoke directly to your situation? You got a word at that time, you're like, oh, I'm so glad I didn't stay home because I was about to. I'm so glad I went. Because I got a word, and it just pushed me over the hump, and it just gave me the faith that I needed to just keep going. Okay? Romans 10, 14 says this. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him who they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Romans 10, 17, in closing, says this. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The letter R in rest stands for revelation. We're coming to a close on that letter right now. God has had me probably preach about six sermons on just the letter R, so you can imagine how important revelation is. So when you are going through a crisis in your life, you have to remember to pick up your Bible and see who Christ is. Did you hear that? Play on words there. Whenever you're going through a crisis, you have to remember who Christ is. And we remember who Christ is by picking up this word of God, and he will speak a word to us in season. Amen? Let's stand to our feet at this time. It's so important that we live for the better bread, that we live for God's word, and we don't look to solve the problem, okay? Every time an, a, a anxiety or trouble shows up to your doorstep, you don't immediately have to touch it. Do you hear what I'm saying? Every time a test comes into your life, you don't immediately have to touch it and start trying to figure it out because I told you that our instinct is to go directly into strategy, to bypass revelation. We don't pray. We don't get empowered by the Holy Spirit. We just pick up that Rubik's Cube and start trying to figure it out and figure it out and figure it out. And God wants to let us know, listen, don't touch that thing. Don't touch that situation. Don't touch that problem because it's going to end up being for my glory. We think that we're doing God a favor. We think that we're operating uh, by the power of God or with the unction of God sometimes when we go to try to figure something out. But there was a time when the Ark of the Covenant was moving through a city and it became unstable on its cart. And the law had, had went out that nobody was ever supposed to touch that Ark. OK, and it began to stumble and began to fall. There was a problem. There was a situation and a man saw it and he thought he was doing a good thing by touching it. But he had broke God's law and by touching it, he died and lost his life. I'm trying to tell you that sometimes the enemy puts things out in front of us, these concerns, these troubles, just to make us leave faith. And go out there and be in sin and not get a word from God before you move. Don't let, don't let anybody force their emergency on you to make you move. Amen. We need a word from God, even when it's good, even when it sounds like a good idea. I'm sure there's people in here right now that you have a family member or a co-worker that said, hey, I, I've got a tip on this good stock, you know. If you put in some money for this stock, you look at me like, stock? I'm just trying to pay my bills. Oh, so just, just, just go with me on this example, all right? And, and you do it because it seemed like a good thing, and then you lose money. Why? Because you had no revelation. You just had somebody's imagination. So the, the main thing I want to leave you with is this. Your imagination is dangerous. Your imagination can be dangerous. Don't move off imagination only move off of revelation. What has God said? Wait on God to speak. And if you've prayed and God still hasn't given you a word, then listen, I implore you to go back to the word of God and look at what he's already said and stand on something he's already did and something that he's already said. Amen. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you for this word tonight. Revelation is so important. Even in the Lord's Prayer, it says, give us this day our daily bread. And we know that man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word 
that comes out of your mouth, God. God, would you please help us to stop uh, wearing ourselves out and getting so tired in life and to just be still and see your salvation. God, we ask that you would just open up our understanding, give us ears to hear you and you alone. We desire, help us to have a strong desire to see you win, to see your victory, to see your name praised and your name exalted in our situation and help us to cease from our own works and enter by our faith into your rest. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's give God some praise tonight. I want 